Good morning. How are you doing today? Good morning. I'm great. I'm excited. I'm excited to talk with you, too, because I'm so proud of you for writing this book. Because, I mean, yes, I was there for 30 for 30. I rewound it 10 million times. I kept going back to learn oh. new things. And But now with a book, I can patiently go through your paragraphs. And it is so important for people to read this book. Thank you so much, Arrow. That touches my heart. Thank you. How easy was it for you to go in and write something like this? Because when it's coming from your body, I mean, that, we're talking about your mind and soul now. Yeah, you know, when I when I wrote it, it was just it's it was such a warming and healing experience. Just coming up, just thinking back. You don't take the time to really go back and talk about your childhood and the way you see things as a child, and then now. To have to bring up those memories as an adult, there was a lot of healing involved. There was a lot of laughter and just being thankful again, you know, for not just the good times, but the tough times that I really think prepared me for who I am today and the and the influence that I've, you know, that I've been able to build. And um, like I say in my memoir, it 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 is. Um, it is just very empowering to be an Asian American woman today mm -hmm. and to be to be able to talk about the challenges that I had throughout my life. One of the things that my Sabanim in martial arts shared with me, he says that there aren't enough books about Asian American people because they need to figure out who is the face, who is the image. And I think this book is going to be so important because there's going to be all ages walking into a bookstore, seeing this going, oh, my God, I, I, I am her. I, I can be like her. I can I can live longer and, and strive harder. Thank you. That's definitely the hope. I mean, when you're writing it, you, you know, after reading what I wrote, um, with, by the way, my, my co-writer, Dana Benbow, who was incredible. You think it's a good book. I thought it was a good book, but we've gotten some great feedback from professionals on how inspirational it is, like Booklist, who's a very important reviewer, starred the review. So um, a quote that I from the review that really warmed my hot heart, it said, a must read about a courageous billiards icon now facing the most significant challenge of her life. And I would definitely say that that's true. I mean, just talking about my life while, you know, these last few years have been really, really challenging. It turned my world upside down, but to be able to write about it, to sit here today alive and thankful I think that's a story that anybody can read. One of the things that you bring up in, in the book, and, and I'm so so proud of you for being this transparent, is is your, your struggle with scoliosis. And the reason why I bring this up is because I, I work with somebody whose daughter, she just happened to lean over one day and her mother saw something in her back. The people aren't talking about scoliosis like they used to, and it needs to be you know brought back into the picture. That's absolutely true. And that's actually how my mom found out. She didn't find out till I was 13. We were, I'm born and raised in Newark and my mom took me out to Long Island Beach. And that's really what happened is we went years without them being able, uh, you know, her really seeing me naked. You know, I'm 12, 13 years old at that point. I've been shown from, by myself for a long time. And when we were there and I took my shirt off, um, I didn't even have to bend. It was it was very obvious to the eye. It was 58 and 56 mm. degrees in S shape. So that just uh, ended our beach day pretty quickly. And then, you know, it was a whirlwind after that. Mm -hmm. The opening of the book is so special with Billie Jean King. Oh, man. You, oh, my God, I, I know. <laughs> I mean, I just, I just wanted to hug the book. I really did. <laughs> I'd be happy to hug you in person, Arrow. <laughs> so in create, creating the book, did you have to use the same type of energy and perseverance that you do when, when you are in, in, in a billiards match? Because, I mean, I, to, to place those words in the right place and to trust your heart that it was the right message to share. You know, I'll tell you, um, Dana Benbow, who helped me during that time, I was in the middle of, you know, when we started writing this, I was deep in chemo. And I was on a lot of medication wow. and I was my body was fighting because they took me off treatments for my ankylosing spondylitis and my fibromyalgia. I mean, you know, it's during COVID and those are two autoimmune diseases. It was really, really scary and it was hard to think. And Dana just 
she really just helped me through it. You know, I was able to just kind of brain dump, but it, it definitely took just pouring, opening my heart and pouring out my soul. And uh, she was able to help me organize it in a way that made sense and um, was still inspiring. I just want listeners to understand that this is not just a book about billiards or about sports. This is about humanism. And because I, inside my heart, I just feel like that a lot of caretakers need to pick up this book and they need to study this book because, because the two of you working together, the way that you work through things in life, it can actually inspire and influence others to continue doing the same in their chapters. Yeah, it, it's very easy, you know, when things hit us hard and it hits everyone yeah. and it's, it's hard to compare because when you're in the middle of it, when you're experiencing it, it seems like the worst thing in the world, but you're not alone. You feel alone. You feel like no one can understand, but people can understand what pain is about and doubt and fear and anxiety. And it's not about getting through it, um, smiling and, you know, while you're going through it, it's going to be tough. You might cry, you might scream, you might get angry, but you have to be able to heal and believe that tomorrow can be a better day. And that, you know, my whole thing is, I don't ever want to be a victim. I've had so many things that I've overcome, the challenges with scoliosis, ovarian mm -hmm. cancer, raising six kids, being a woman, you know, an Asian woman, trying to achieve in a decidedly male world. That's what the book is all about. It's it it's meant to empower women and especially in Asian today with everything that has gone on. I, I know that there's still a lot of, you know, even with my kids in school, uh, they're Korean American born and raised here. But, you know, they've gotten a lot of, you know, oh, do you eat dog? And uh, people have alienated them because they believe that they're they gave their mom COVID and just ridiculous things and um it's all about getting getting through it getting through the tough times no matter how hard it is when your whole body is telling you to stay in bed and yeah. pull the covers on sometimes the most courageous thing you can do is just putting one foot on the ground yeah you know and then the other it's not about um you know going out there and running a marathon it's about you know strength doesn't come from the absence of fear and the absence of doubt. It, it's in the face of it when everything just is pulling you down and you manage to just get out of bed and get dressed when everything is telling you not to. That's true courage, in my opinion. You know, it's not the person who grew up silver spoon and everything came easy. It's, it's knowing that, uh, you know, things get tough some, sometimes, but mm -hmm. believing that if you can just get through it, the other side is a lot better than staying in bed. Because if you stay in bed, then you know that's as good as it'll ever get. That's it. That's it. That's it. Something tells you know. me, something tells me, though, that not only did you get up, but you made sure that you took a walk. Because, I mean, and intention walks are so important that, that you kept movement going through your whole entire body. Yes, that's that's actually what I still struggle with today is you know, just making sure that just getting up and getting out of bed is now no longer okay because yeah. I've been doing that. Now it's get on the recumbent bike, Yep. you know, build up some strength, use those resistance bands, do what you can. And if that means 10 minutes and then taking a break and then doing five more minutes, whatever it is, um, be proud of yourself and know that I'm out there proud of you and hopefully you'll be encouraged by my book the black widow a memoir wow uh, where, where can people go to find out more and share some beautiful love with you you were just reading my mind so <laughs> a special that i you know the book will come out will be available in bookstores august 13th it's also available at triumphbooks.com and amazon but if you order from my website caramsports.com and that's c-a-r-o M like Mary, S P like Paul, O R T S dot com. If you order before August 13th, um, the, the Black Widow, a memoir, you will get an autographed <gasps> copy oh, from man. me. That's awesome. And so please order before August 13th. I promise you won't regret it. There's even a, a cool hustling story that I did with SI writer um, Rick Riley with the 
you know, surprise twist. So that was kind of cool. But and and talking as a Christian woman, you know, yeah. believing that all the hard things have a purpose, you know, and you don't know what's going on. When I got hit with scoliosis at 12, I felt my world crashing and my mom would say, oh, don't worry. God has a great plan for you. <laughs> and I would be like, shut up, mom. What are you talking about? <laughs> but years later, I ended up becoming the national spokesperson for the scoliosis association. Wow. And that's something you would never dream of at 12. That's that's where you know there really is a bigger plan if you can just get through the tough times. And that's something I do talk about in the in my memoir. Wow. Please come back to this show anytime in the future. The door is always going to be open for you. I will find you in Charlotte. Yes, Errol. <laughs> Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And, and if anybody wants to stay in touch with me, they can go to the Black, uh, Jeanette Lee, the Black Widow, on Facebook. My Instagram is Jeanette Lee and my Twitter is Black Widow. So would love to hear from you guys. I do read them. Be brilliant today. Agreed.